Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to HG Radio, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. Here is your co-founder and host, Kim Becker. Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Our guest today is Susan Kerber. Susan is a former marketing and business development leader who turned her skills to the nonprofit sector more than two years ago when she agreed to develop Caring Bridges partnership and outreach efforts. Susan develops relationships with healthcare and health focused organizations to help Caring Bridge fulfill its vision that no one goes through a health journey alone. Her colleagues would describe her as someone who is passionate, generous, and a tireless advocate and consummate professional devoted to enhancing connections for those that are isolated. She, however, would say that she is doing what needs to be done to ease the burden and stress for families. Susan looks forward to sharing the Caring Bridge story and the role of the, that the organization plays in the lives of families who use the service. Caring Bridge is a global nonprofit social network that provides free personal websites to families on a health journey. Hi, Susan, and welcome to the show. Well, thank you. What a lovely inter- introduction, and I'm delighted <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be able to connect with you. You know, um, you it's funny, you have those relationships, right, that, that you talk about all the time, and so you just assume that people will know who you are because you talk about them constantly. We promote your organization to so many of the women that we serve because it is such an amazing tool um, as I'm sure you know, people get tired of talking about their disease. They don't, they just, they they just get tired of talking. They want everybody just to know what's going on and to not have to, to say another word about cancer, at least in our situation. And so when I discovered Caring Bridge, we shared this tool with so many of the women that we serve because it gave them an outlet, number one, because it was um, kind of like an online journal, but also then they were able to invite people that they wanted to hear more about their journey through what you guys provide. So uh, again, I'm just, I'm excited to learn more about you and more about the organization because we we certainly have a very, um, a very similar passion to help people who um, are ill. So so tell me a little bit about like what actually does Caring Bridge do? Kind of give me a, that in a nutshell. Sure. And I'll just add on what you've already said. You mentioned that we're the largest nonprofit social network dedicated to health and that we offer free patients, you know, and family-centered websites. And really the purpose of Caring Bridge is to connect patients and families during that health crisis treatment and recovery so everyone is together and the patient feels, um, you know, that sort of sense of, of, of belonging and purpose with their life and feeling um, as though their friends and family are really coming together with them on their health journey to, to help them and to offer them a way forward in terms of, you know, support messages on Caring Bridge. And what I what I love too is the fact that you create almost like a private environment for them as well. You know, social media is so big right now. You know, they could put it on Facebook, but then everybody and their brother sees it. And what you've been able to do is that they can use this journal as an online outlet, but then they get to pick and choose kind of who reads that information. Yes, they do. Um, you know, the one, the good thing about Caring Bridge, unlike some of the other social media tools, is we do not sell advertising, and sites can be easily personalized with photos, videos, and you can even name your site. And then we also offer the customizable privacy setting, so your site can be as private or as public as you want it to be, which means you can, one, only invite those close family members and friends, or you can also include your Caring Bridge community or also include your social media friends. And the beauty of our site settings is that you can toggle back and forth between the three. So maybe you're not sure right away with you starting out with your Caring Bridge website and you only want to invite a few close family friends. But over time, you might want to share your stories more widely and include your Caring Bridge community, or include your social media friends as well. Mm-hmm. And that's what I and that's what I love because you've given them, you've empowered these individuals to share as much as they want with as many people as they want, 
or as little as they want with as few people as they want. So you've really given them the control, which I I love that site even more. It's one. It's just wonderful. Thank so, you. We really have ahead. given them the control. In fact, we don't sell any of their data either, which is another point of you know differentiation mm -hmm. uh, to Caring Bridge from other social media sites. And the other thing is that Caring Bridge is really all about the patient or family caregiver, and other social media is not. So on those sites, there's always a lot of extraneous content. We're here, we're just totally focused on your journey and your family and friends and visitors responding either by using the heart amplifier, which is the same as a like feature, because not everybody knows what to, to say to somebody on a health yeah, journey. That's right. And, you know, that patient just needs to know that you're out there thinking about them. So there's a beautiful little heart amplifier that will pop up and let the patient know that someone is thinking about them and your name will be identified. And then, um, you know, you can also send them as a visitor photos uh, and videos. You know, it's just a great way to lift someone's spirits and let them know that you're thinking about them. And then you can also comment with love and support for patients, you know, what they're going through. Um, generally doesn't have to be long messages either. Uh, unless they're, that's your preference. It could be quick updates to let everyone know how your day went, what the doctor said, and what comes next. Well, and again, you know, I didn't think about that, but really what you've done is you've allowed that support system to be there for the person that's going through this because you're right. A lot of times people don't know what to say. It, we have found this to be true in our situations with the women that we serve, and that is that when people don't know what to say, they say nothing and stay away. So if you've given them, which you have through Caring Bridge, you've actually given them a platform where they can just show a heart. They could just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. There doesn't have to be any awkward silence or anything because of the platform that you've set up. So it's not only to even empower just the patient, but you empower the people that want to support them. You've given them a platform to be able to do so. You're absolutely right. And from my own personal experience, I lost a dear friend to ovarian cancer before, before Caring Bridge was in the marketplace. Uh, Caring Bridge started in 1997. And I, as a friend, uh, especially as, as, as my, uh, my good friend got closer and closer to hospice, hospice I felt totally isolated mm -hmm. because I really had no way to check in with her unless I got in my car and drove over to her house. And then it was, you know, is this a comfortable time to visit? And oftentimes it wasn't. So from an old, from my personal standpoint, I just really appreciate Caring Bridge and know the value that it can bring not only to the patient, but to family and friends as well. That's right. And so I, I, I hate to even have to ask this, but I don't know, uh, how did Caring Bridge even start? Sure, and before I get into that, I just wanna mention because uh, since we are a, a social media tool, um, oftentimes people wonder, like, well, is it tough to get it started? And really, it only takes about two or three minutes to create a Caring Bridge website. That's and we have a live customer care team standing by and a chat forum. So if there's any issues, there's always someone to reach out to uh, to help you get started. That's and wonderful. Then, yeah. And then in terms of how we, um, how we started, it's a lovely story. Caring Bridge was really started out of love by our founder, Sana Mary, or her dear friends, Joanne and Darren, who experienced serious complications with their premature baby. Mm -hmm. They asked Sana to communicate to family and friends on the progress of the baby, which she did for a few days, but found herself emotionally and physically exhausted from reaching out to everyone and trying to share the same information to keep everyone informed. Now, this was the early days, so this was 1997, so this really, you know, predated all of social media. Yeah. So we're really for the first um, social media um, site out there. Um, after several days of Sana trying to keep everybody connected and having a technology background, she went down to the basement of her home in Egan, Minnesota, which is where we are still headquartered, and she created the first Caring Bridge website for baby Bridget. So baby Bridget passed after nine short days. Her legacy lived on with her website, Caring for Baby Bridget. Oh. And the name Caring Bridge grew organically from that first website. 
And Joanne and Darren have stayed friends of Caring Bridge all these years, and we honor Baby Bridget's legacy every day with the work that we do. That is such a cool story. I had no idea that's how it started. That's amazing. Yeah, that's is. amazing. Now, is the is the founder still involved too with the organization? The founder has retired, but she is still very involved with the organization. Okay. And and how many families has Caring Bridge helped? Oh my goodness. To date, we have more than 800,000 sites and these websites have received more than 2.1 billion visits with 30 plus million visitors annually. Wow. That is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Caring, I know. A Caring Bridge website is created every eight minutes and mm -hmm. one in 11 people in the U.S. have used Caring Bridge either as an author or a visitor in the past year. Wow. And so what kind of health conditions does Caring Bridge provide free sites for? I know obviously we encourage our women that battle cancer, but I, it, you don't have to have cancer, right? You can have, it's any health condition that qualifies for Caring Bridge. Am I correct? That is absolutely correct. Caring Bridge is for every health journey, acute to chronic and physical to invisible wounds of mental health. Caring Bridge is really for anyone experiencing any health issue and feeling they need the support of their family and friends. As you mentioned, Kim, this includes cancer, but it also includes stroke, dementia, transplant, pediatrics, it could be diabetes, uh, complications with a pregnancy or a birth. Um, I, you also probably want to know in your audience well that over 64% of sites are created by family caregivers with 36% of sites being created by someone experiencing a health situation or crisis. So mm -hmm. um, it's just really natural for a family caregiver to, well, to turn to Caring Bridge to help them manage all the chaos that might be going on with the health condition of a loved one. Wow. And so um, what are some of the organizations then that Caring Bridge actually partners with? Absolutely. We value the support of healthcare organizations in referring Caring Bridge to their patients. And we know this is an important source of site starts for us. We have um, uh, higher site starts with um, hospital outreach um, than we do in other forms. So, you know, if, if, and you think about it if you're hearing about Caring Bridge from a nurse or a social worker or your doctor, uh, somebody that you totally trust you're going to check Caring Bridge out and see if it's something that you should start. So hospitals um, that we work with, um, gosh, we work with thousands of hospitals around the country, but Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, we just started a relationship with the Department of Veterans Affairs, Dana Farber, and gosh, many, many others. And then we also partner with organizations like yourselves, nonprofits, American Cancer Society, American Stroke Association, Dementia Action Alliance, um, you know, really, we, we're all working together to champion each other's efforts because at the end of the day, all we want to do is help ease the burdens of family. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I was surprised, which is why I try and pass your word along to so many. Um, you know, I would, my first question is to a lot of our women after they're in the midst of their makeover is, you know, have you ever heard of Caring Bridge or do you have that? And some of them do have sites and some of them had not ever heard of it. And it really does help them. Um, to know about it. And then, you know, once we kind of introduce that to them, we let them go to the website and kind of check it out for themselves. But I think it's that I just to even educate people to let them know, look, this exists and it's it doesn't cost anything. Right. What does it are, how is the site paid for and and how are the services paid for? Well, yes. Excellent question. So it doesn't cost a thing. The sites are free and the services are paid uh, by our donors. Um, so, 90% of our funding comes from the people who have used Caring Bridge, and the average donation is $65, which is incredible. And 10% yes. from in kind donations or other revenue sources through grants. So, obviously, the people that are using Caring Bridge truly value it and want to pay forward for another family that can use the services. And we were talking about like the the different um, you know conditions that can actually um, be a part of Caring Bridge. Do you notice 
do you have? Is there there more cancer than dementia? Is there more mental health than um, more mental health than actual physical health? Do you do you have any? I mean, who do you think uses it the most? I think uh, those conditions that I mentioned earlier: cancer, stroke, dementia, transplant, pediatric, diabetes, complicated pregnancy or birth. Um, I think those are some of the top conditions for sure. Uh, mental health certainly in the country is on the rise, most definitely uh, with the Department of Veterans Affairs. It's something they're trying to tackle with veterans and service members. In fact, uh, we have a signed memorandum of agreement um, with the Department of Vet Veterans Affairs, in particular the Behavior Health and Suicide Prevention Group is very interested um, in working with Caring Bridge because of that connection that we can make with those who might be depressed or feeling isolated and maybe not even realizing, you know, that they're having th potential thoughts of suicide mm -hmm. and just need the connection of family and friends and their peers to help sort of pull them back into the fold. That's right. Do you, you know, I some of our um, fun moments are when a woman comes back to us, you know, two and three years later and says, you know, my Hello Gorgeous Day was the best day of my life. Do you guys get the opportunity to meet many people that have used your services through a time when they really needed this tool for support? We do um, get a chance to meet them and they reach out to us and we reach out to them. If you look at the resource section in Caring Bridge, it's just chock full of just incredible stories, heartfelt stories from um, our, our users uh, telling us about their health journey and, you know, how Caring Bridge and their family helped them through that journey and helped them emotionally heal. Do you have a favorite story? Oh, gosh, I don't know if I have a favorite story. Um, there's just so, so many to share. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that that's what's so hard to, you know, you always have, uh, for me, I always have one or two that kind of stick out. But, you know, it's just you're so grateful that you've been able to make an impact in somebody's life that that's, that's what feeds you, you know, kind of that's, that's the juice, just knowing that every day you're doing something that's positive, that's really making the world a better place. And I think that that's, you know, that's what you guys do at Caring Bridge. So we talked a little bit. I, we talked I was, a little bit. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go. No, no I'm sorry. I was just going to say and thank you because you do the exact same thing. We do. And I, you know, and I, I'm grateful. I always tell people when they ask I, that I really, I really do have the best job in the whole world. So I'm very excited that I get that I'm blessed to, I'm blessed with work. Although I always say that you know, cancer went away and I became unemployed, I would be okay with that too. So, uh. <laughs> um, so one of the questions that I had for you, we may have already discussed this already, but the features and the functionality of a Caring Bridge website, tell me a little bit about the, um, the help assets with those. Sure. Um, other than it's super easy to set up a site in a few minutes, and we've already talked about the fact that it's privacy protected, I think our journal really is sort of the hero because mm -hmm. uh, journaling really is a powerful tool for self-expression as well as basic information sharing, and it's there for people. And then we have a pretty incredible ways to help page. So on this page, you can start a GoFundMe campaign that links to your CaringBridge visitors so they can help you raise money for medical expenses if that's, if that's something that you desire. Um, there's also a planner on this page to schedule and coordinate test support like meals, rides to appointments, group prayer sessions and more. You can also add support links that help you feel supported by your community, such as a link to a health organization or support group. And then you can also display your healthcare facility address so your visitors can visit you in the hospital or they can send cards or flowers. And then I also mentioned the resource section, but that's just an incredible section that's full of topics of healing and caregiving and well-being. We also have a bookshelf with books written by Caring Bridge authors, visitors, and supporters. And some of those authors, you know, really find that the writing process very cathartic and have turned their personal journeys into bestsellers, such as When Breath Becomes Air, The Bright Hour. Um, and you can find more on our bookshelf on caringbridge.org. And, you know, you don't have to be an author or a writer to appreciate Caring Bridge. Journal posts can be short, a sentence or two. The idea is to 
stay connected with those who care. About 65% of our users um, will access CaringBridge through their mobile device. It's really easy to do so. And, um, you know, those are those typically are much shorter posts. And and I and like you said though, it doesn't have to be anything big. People oh. just want to hear from you. It may just be I had a bad day, or maybe it's I had a good day. But it's just something to let people know. You know, it allows them to engage and you know, um, in in their life. I think that that's just it. That's what I think. Caring Bridges we talked about earlier too. It just it really allows people to be active. Whether you're a supporter or whether you're a caregiver or whether you're going through the disease, you can connect with you know, people that are out there that want to be connected with you. Absolutely, yeah. And the other thing about Caring Bridge is, um, just so, so people know, um, but depending on who the patient or the family caregiver, whoever starts the site, has the ability to add co-authors or a buddy who can help manage communications with their Caring nice. Bridge community. So co-authors are given the permission to help write other people add journal updates, post photos, and help coordinate ways to help. It's often, you know, the co-author who will coordinate the ways to help activities because that's, that's asking the patient to do a lot. And sometimes it's just easier for co-authors to ask the patient's friends and family for support. And mm -hmm. they can also start the GoFundMe campaign too. That's nice. So if somebody was looking to learn more about Caring Bridge, where should they go? I'd say they go right to the website, um, caringbridge.org. Uh, they can even start a site and test it and see if it's something that they think that they would like. That's awesome. And then you said you guys are global too, so you're in other countries as well, not just in the United States? I mean, just yes. you, so people can access you all over the world. Yes, we're in 235 territories across the world. So yes, we're a, we're a global company. Our, our strong foothold obviously is national, but we are global as well. That's amazing. So we have just a few minutes left. So I really want to know because my, I originally, I owned a business in the profit world and then I switched to the nonprofit world. So what about Caring Bridge drew you into the nonprofit world? I was really ready to work for a mission, and this is my first time doing that. Um, and I wanted to give back to the community since I've been in the marketplace in healthcare uh, for 25 years. You know, I was really ready to do something that helped patients and family caregivers directly. Um, and Caring Bridge really helps them emotionally heal and lifts their spirits. And it's just, um, I, I very much enjoy being here. It, it's been a, a good switch for me. Well, and I think too, you know, it's just, you really want to, as life goes on, you find the importance in, in the, the little things, but it's also, I think that it's, it really is knowing that you're making an impact, right? And I think that for you guys and what you guys are doing at, at Caring Bridge, you can see by the number of sites that are created and the activity on the sites that Caring Bridge is truly making an impact in this world with with the, like you said, the playing field all the way across from the person that's actually dealing with the disease to the caregiver, to the people that wanna know more about the person that's actively going through whatever their health challenge is. And so it that has to feel good too, just knowing that you're making an impact. Yes, it does, thank you. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today. And this has been, um, it's actually been, you were, uh, Caring Bridge was on, I created a list of people that I wanted to be able to interview when I first started my show in March and Caring Bridge was at the top of the list. So I'm so oh, grateful. Great. I'm so grateful that I was able to connect with you. And so I really appreciate you taking the time out to speak with me today and share the work thank that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that very much. Um, if you have any questions or comments about the show or would like to know more about our guest or for more information about Hello Gorgeous, feel free to contact me at kbecker at hellogorgeous.org or visit our website at www.hellogorgeous.org. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download our mobile app. Thank you so much for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and until next time, stay gorgeous.